Welcome everyone. It is a pleasure to present our findings on the atom's structure. In this presentation, we will be exploring the models proposed by two remarkable physicists, J.J. Thomson and Ernest Rutherford, and their alpha scattering experiment. Let us now dive right into our exploration. Atoms consist of three distinct types of subatomic particles. Electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons have a negative charge, protons are positively charged and neutrons have no charge. J. J. Thomson discovered the presence of electrons in the atom in 1900. A year later, Ernst Goldstein identified new radiations in gas discharge that were positively charged, resulting in the discovery of protons. Finally, in 1932, James Chadwick identified the presence of neutrons. Their joint discoveries assist in comprehending the structure of an atom. J. J. Thomson proposed the plum pudding model of an atom in 1897. This model suggested that atoms were composed of a sphere of positive charge with electrons randomly embedded in it, which explained why an atom as a whole is electrically neutral due to the equal magnitudes of negative and positive charges. This was an exciting idea at the time and it provided the basis for further discoveries about the structure of an atom. Rutherford's model of the atom suggests it has a small, positively charged nucleus at the center, surrounded by a cloud of negative electrons. To verify this, Rutherford ran an alpha scattering experiment. He shot a beam of fast, positively charged alpha particles at a thin gold foil. Though many particles passed through, some were slightly deflected and a few even bounced off. This proved there was a small, dense nucleus with a positive charge within the atom, revealing there are distinct, subatomic particles in the atom. Conclusions from Ernest Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment revealed that atoms contain much empty space, a small, positively charged nucleus and little evidence of electrons in motion. This led to Rutherford's model of atoms being composed of a positive nucleus surrounded by electrons in orbits around it, the nucleus being minuscule compared to the size of the atom. These findings gave us a better insight into the structure of an atom and have drastically impacted our understanding of matter. Rutherford's model of an atom depicts a very small and positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons in circular orbits. Although the model is widely accepted, it has some major flaws. One of the biggest challenges is that according to classical physics, any particle in a circular orbit will experience acceleration. This will cause the particle to emit energy and the electrons will eventually lose enough energy to collide with the nucleus, leading to an unstable atom. However, it is clear that atoms are not unstable, which cannot be explained by Rutherford's model. In Niels Bohr's atomic model, it is stated that an atom has a positively charged nucleus at its center, and most of its mass is in the nucleus. Electrons are found in distinct orbits, otherwise known as shells or energy levels, which are displayed using letters or numbers. Moreover, electrons do not emit energy while rotating in these orbits. This model was a great step forward in our understanding of the form of an atom. Electron distribution in different shells is an interesting area of research in atomic physics. Bohr and Bury's rules describe the maximum number of electrons that can fit in each shell and how they are filled. The maximum number of electrons in a given shell is determined by the formula 2n2, where n is the number of the shell. The maximum number of electrons in the outermost shell is 8 and electrons must be filled in inner shells before they can be filled in outer shells. The table in this slide presents the atomic structure of the first 18 elements, comprising the name, symbol, atomic number, number of protons, neutrons and electrons, as well as the distribution of electrons in the shells K, L, M, N and the valency of the element. This information provides us with a better understanding of the structure of the atom and its behavior in various applications. Scientists were able to construct models of the atomic structures of the first 18 elements as science progressed. 
These models precisely depicted the magnitude and distribution of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Each atom had a nucleus with a determined number of protons, and electrons were placed in energy shells, or orbitals, surrounding the nucleus. This structure was referred to as the Bohr model, which is the basis of our understanding of atomic structure presently. Atoms become stable when they form bonds with other atoms. This process is called valency and is determined by the number of electrons in an atom's outermost shell. Elements such as helium, which have two electrons in its outermost shell, are considered inert, while atoms of other elements with eight electrons in their outermost shell form an octet configuration. This octet configuration makes them stable. On the other hand, if an atom's outermost shell is not completely filled, it seeks stability by either losing, gaining, or sharing electrons with other atoms. The number of electrons lost, gained or shared by an atom to form the octet configuration is the element's valency. For instance, the hydrogen, lithium, and sodium atoms can easily lose one electron and become stable with a valency of one. Also, magnesium can easily lose two electrons and have a valency of two. Atomic number and mass number are essential to comprehending the design of an atom. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. It remains constant for each element and cannot be altered. The mass number is the amount of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. It determines the mass of the atom and is mainly relied upon the mass of the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. The symbol for an atom is made up of the element's symbol and the atomic number and mass number expressed as a subscript and superscript respectively. Different atoms of the same element can have various mass numbers, leading to various isotopes. Hydrogen is an example, with three isotopes including protium, deuterium and tritium, each having the same atomic number but different mass numbers. Carbon also has two isotopes, and chlorine has two as well. This variety of isotopes provides a great range of chemical properties for each element. Atomic structures can be quite complex, but one of the ways researchers simplify their understanding is by looking at isobars, atoms of different elements having different atomic numbers but the same mass number. For example, Calcium, with an atomic number of 20, and argon, with an atomic number of 18, both have a mass number of 40. Similarly, iron with an atomic number of 26 and nickel with an atomic number of 27 both have an atomic mass of 58. The ability to recognize and study these groups of elements has allowed researchers to better understand the structure of the atom, and to continue innovating in the field of atomic structure. Thank you for listening.